<laughs> Sorry. Raphael. I mean, honestly. We can do this. Come on, Raphael. Keep it down. We're back here with Fireboom Three Houses, our Verdant Wind Assassins only run with more support theater. Oh, Cyril has so many. Let's just do all the Cyril ones right now. Cyril and Hilda to be. Oh boy, is this gonna be the worst? This might have been a bad one to start with. Move it. I'm supposed to refill the horses' water troughs, but I can't find the buckets. Sounds like a personal problem to me. He says. What's the usual place? Maybe you'd know where that is if you did your job sometime. You know, Cyril, I don't want to interrupt you while you're cleaning, but... Come on, the buckets are over near the wall, where they always are, because I put them there. Okay. Thanks for your help. You're pretty strong. I bet you're tired, though. Come on, let's rest a bit. Okay, just for a minute, though. I got more work to do. <laughs> this is a very comfortable rest we're taking. I'm not a fan of awkward silences. Only awkward if you say so. Anything interesting happened lately? Figured you were the one with something to say. Quiet, don't bother me. I need an interesting topic for this letter I'm writing to my brother. I'm stumped. Your brother write to you a lot? Constantly. Yeah, he must be bored. He's always going on about how worried he is for me. Please tread somewhat lightly on what you tell Zero about your brother. It's worse. If I take too long to reply, he gets more worried and writes more about it. Write about your life, maybe. You know, stuff like, I got real lazy again today. Or maybe, can you believe I still don't know where they put the water buckets? <laughs> You're mean. Do you really think that little of me? You're a lazy gal who gets people to do her work for her. I never knew anybody like that in Almira. Oh, really? So, Lady Rhea isn't the only difference between Fodlin and Almira, after all? I don't like comparing Lady Rhea with you, but I figure you're right. You know what's real weird? Nobody seems to mind picking up your slack. Even me. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Nothing worth repeating. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. He's such a diligent boy. I don't think I've ever seen someone from Fodlin work that hard. Oh, hang on. I never got an idea from him about what to write in my letter. Ugh. I guess there's nothing for it. Maybe I can just write about Cyril. I'm sure your brother would love that. I have nothing to say about that support. I am uncomfortable. Ignatz and Shamir. Oh, right. I said I would do all the Cyril ones. Oops. No, I do not dislike you. <laughs> really? Oh, huh. I'm so glad I asked. Finally. <laughs> so he does care. Why were you asking me about the world outside Fodlin before? There's so much I have yet to see. Even these days, when it's ravaged by conflict, the world is so diverse. Buildings and landscapes and geography differ vastly from place to place. There's so much variety within Fodlin. And the outside world must be even more varied. I feel so inspired just thinking about it. So, I'd like to travel there someday. I see. You should go. <laughs> now, in fact. You think so? I told you before, in order to know the world, you have to experience it for yourself. There is much to see. Even simple things. Flowers, food, varieties that don't exist in Fodlan. New smells, new tastes. I could tell you about them, but you would only imagine them, not comprehend them. You've got a good imagination, though. If you want true understanding, go out into the world. See it with your eyes, feel it with your skin. Speak to its people. Then you will know. Yes. Perhaps so. Is there something else? You've never talked to me like this before, Shamir. It's nothing. Ah, uh, sorry. Hearing you talk about exploring the world made me think about what I should do with myself. Do you have plans for the future? After the war? Well, she and Claude are going to be swapping travel Not stories. Yet. You're ahead of me there. I must find my own path. Ahead of you, Shamir? <laughs> I highly doubt that. If you have time for empty compliments, you have time to encourage me instead. <laughs> yes, of course. Shamir, may you find success in everything you do. It's hollow now that I asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ignatz. I'll do my best. I like it. 
I like it. Although I did very much love the C support. Speak. <laughs> Ah, no, sorry. <laughs> I do like that as a little thing for Ignatz as well, because he's before he's been very content to like learn about the world and art and landscapes through books and stuff. Not that he didn't also have an understanding of it being good to actually go there and stuff. But anyway, I'll go Claude, then Lysidia, then Petra. I'll just do all the Cyril ones now. Like I said, where are you guys huh? in the mausoleum? No, Cyril, it's you. I've got something I need to check. Oh, tomb, me. Tomb. You didn't say anything when we came here with Teach. Lady Rhea said it was okay for you to go in there just that one time. But not anymore. So, uh, have you just been like posted here to guard this whole I thing? I gotta do what Lady Reyes says. You wanna break them rules? Then you'll be her enemy. If you're trying to do that, I'll have to fight you. Fine. I get it. <laughs> I wouldn't hesitate to make an enemy of Rhea if it came to that. But I'd rather not fight with you. So I'll back off. You shouldn't say that in front of him. Why is that? Does it matter? Dunno. With your status, you could smack me to the ground and walk right over me. I guess. But I wouldn't. We're friends. I thought you were the kind of guy who'd smack down just about anybody if you needed to. If he needed to. You really are a stubborn one. All right, then. I'll beat you up if you want. <laughs> I swore I'd change this world so that those without status are no longer oppressed. Though you were never one of the people I was hoping to save. I never knew that there were people in Almira in your kind of situation. I realized that my own perspective was too narrow. You helped me realize hmm. that. So, I owe you. Did you just say you're all about saving people who are oppressed? Really? I did. Is it so strange to hear that from me? It's just... You reminded me of Lady Rhea there for a second. Lady Rhea always tried to save us folks without any status in the world. Like when she let an outsider like me stay at the monastery. That was real nice. She brought in those kids from Remeyer Village when they lost their parents and... Well, I'm not a religious man. I'm sure Rhea wouldn't want to be lumped in with a guy like me. Lady Rhea didn't do those things because the goddess told her she should. She did it because she wanted to. I can tell you that. I see. In that case, maybe I don't need to make an enemy of her. Thanks, Cyril. I think you've brought me a step closer to my dream. Thanks to you too, Claude. If I was able to help you, then that makes me happy. I've never seen that one. That's awesome. And I didn't, it was not at all the direction I was expecting. That Claude didn't realize people like Cyril existed, kind of. It's very interesting indeed. And also that, you know, Claude obviously is not Rhea's number one fan. So to, for him to hear that from Cyril, that Rhea holds some similar ideals to him, when ordinarily that would be pretty hard for him to swallow, it was nice. And that he, that he was like, okay, well, I'm, 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 I'm sort of willing to trust that you say that because you're Cyril and I trust you <laughs> and we're friends. Sweet, very sweet indeed. And Cyril and Lysidia... To be. <sighs> hey, Cyril! Cyril? Hmm. What is he staring at? I see. Hey, what are you looking at there? Anything interesting? Let me have a look. Three apples, two bags of ointment, one piece of graphite. Intriguing. Some sort of code, perhaps? No, it's more like a shopping I was just list. Asked to go out and buy the stuff on this list. Oh, that's all. Sorry for interrupting. In that case, this is kind of a one. Job, so I won't bother you by offering aid. Mm, you actually helped a lot just now, reading that list for me like you did. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't tell anybody, because I've been trying to keep it a secret. But I don't know how to read, so I wasn't sure what to do with the list. Is that so? But why do you keep it a secret? I'd hate it if people figured I wasn't up to a job just because I couldn't read. You're always welcome to call on me for help. I'd be happy to. Thanks. I will. I really mean that. Anything you need. Okay. Good. <laughs> now, you better go get those supplies before it gets dark. Do you remember everything on the list? Need me to read it one more time for you? That would be <laughs> pretty helpful. All right. Listen up. I'm not going to do this a third time. Lysithia's not a good liar, is she? She knew I was in trouble right away. Hang on. Did she just want to act like a big sister? Again? It sounds like that. But she looked real happy when she was helping me. And I think I'd like to see that again sometime. I know what you mean. <laughs> she It's it's so disarming when she's when she acts all sweet and supportive like that. <laughs> Cuz it's just so not what you expect from her. 
no offense, but it's not, it's not her typical demeanor, but she very much has the capacity and the desire for it sometimes. <laughs> Sarah, how is your bow training progressing? I think maybe I've gotten better. It feels a lot easier to ready the bow lately. That is a nice thing to be hearing. You have my support with your efforts. I do? Yes. I am always cheering you on. I am long feeling a great affinity with you. Our positions are dissimilar, but our situations have great similarities. That is why I am always trying hard to be supporting and protecting you. She does not lack for honesty, whatever you may say about her. And you've been cheering me on all along? That's nice to hear. Well, in that case, I'll support you too. You will? That gives me great joy. It makes you happy? It's gonna sound funny, but hearing you say that makes me feel happy too. No, actually, that's a pretty common phenomenon. When people care about each other. You know, I just realized that there's... Well, when you talk, it's kind of powerful. It's like everything you say feels real nice and reassuring. Just listening to you makes me feel better about everything. I think it's a special talent you have. Words can be said by anyone. <laughs> Alone, they are without power. What is meaningful is how you are feeling. I am hoping I can learn to use words well to convey my feelings. That is my wish. I am still learning. My words are not coming out as properly as I am wanting. What, you mean just in this language or in general? Maybe the words aren't, but the feelings behind them are. I really do think you're special. Now that I know you're supporting me, I'm going to work real hard not to let you down. And, um, I hope someday I can get strong enough to inspire you the same way you inspire me. You have already been achieving that goal. You already have great strength. You really think so? Nah, I still got a long way to go. I'm not tough enough to match you yet. So I'm gonna get stronger. Stronger and stronger so I can support you forever. <laughs> stronger and stronger? So you can be supporting me forever? Yeah. Forever and ever. Even when I am being an old woman? It will be a difficulty then. <laughs> I'm sure you'll still be doing triple front flips sure. then. Even when you're an old woman, I'll be an old man right beside you. Doing my best. Is this a bear's proposal? <laughs> old woman Petra and old man Cyril supporting each other. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. That does sound nice. That was so, like, overtly and bombastically romantic. What the heck? I mean, I'm not unhappy about it, but holy, good for you two. Uh, Sedith and Ilsa to be. Oh, no. Oh, it's Sedith. It's in her I room, too. Before he... Ah, I see you are indulging in a bit of reading. You are fond of books. She busts you? into her room. Yes, she feels the need to run. my favorite pastimes. I was just finishing up, actually, so I think I'll... That is most fortuitous. Um, fortuitous? <laughs> How do you figure? Come with me. I have a story to share with you. Poor Hilda. <laughs> Once upon a time, deep in the cold mountains, there lived a lazy fox and an industrious squirrel. The squirrel worked tirelessly all day long, while the fox did nothing but lounge around and play. When autumn came, the squirrel hurriedly gathered up acorns for the winter. But the fox continued to play without a care. A biting winter fell upon the land. The mountains, caked in snow, concealed all nourishment from sight. The hungry fox went to the squirrel, it's a pretty short book. but the squirrel had locked up tight and gone to sleep. Every so often, the squirrel would wake, enjoy a nibble of an acorn, and then return to an easy slumber. The fox, on the other hand, with nowhere else to turn, was forced to scrounge for food in the bitter cold of the forest. Forlorn and angry, he wandered in solitude all through the winter. Until spring came once more. This is a really sad children's fable, said And so it is to this very day that foxes are denied the comforts of hibernation. What? <laughs> That's so dark! I really learned something about foxes! <laughs> I read lots of fairy tales like that when I was little. But the lazy fox and the industrious squirrel, huh? That one, I don't think I've heard before. That is not surprising, considering I wrote it. Oh, you wrote it? That explains a lot. <laughs> did. When Flane was young, she loved fairy tales more than anything. I would read them to her often. This one, however, 
is a more recent creation. I wrote it for the benefit of the children in the monastery. So, what do you think? I'm curious to hear what sort of impression it made on you. It's so cute! You, you found it to be cute? I can just <laughs> see it now. You writing fairy tales for your little sister. That's just the cutest thing! Honestly, to me, you usually come across as stern and overly perceptive. But now I know you have a sweet side, too. I feel like I'm seeing you in a whole new life. And I feel like you're missing the that point. Not what I was hoping to hear. I loved his delivery on... <laughs> this one is a more recent creation. <laughs> so, like, I'm on the edge of snapping. <laughs> like, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, Ferdinand and Petra. I guess we're going to get to hear this in Crimson Flower anyway, but... Ferdinand? Sure. Our professor is wanting to see you. Hmm. He has much concentration right now. I will wait for him to be finished reading. Hmm. Ah, this is taking too long! <laughs> Punch him in the back of the head. Diplomacy has an effect upon weapons development. Yes, that makes sense. Oh, Petra, how long have you been there? A short time. You were devoting all of your attention to that book. Forgive me, I was fully absorbed in my reading. I see you have been reading as well. Anything interesting? I am studying the history of Fodlin. A history book? What a keen student you are. And it's about House Hressfeld. Certainly a stimulating topic. <laughs> got some good eyesight there. I'm wishing to learn all about She's Fodlin. standing like 10 feet away. What is the book you are reading? <laughs> oh, this? This relates to a little hobby of mine. The regional history of weapons development in Fodlin. It's certainly a little hobby. Militaries have to adapt their weapons according to terrain and climate. And they have to keep up with technologies in other regions. It's very interesting. Yes, it is interesting. I see why you would be enjoying that kind of reading. Oh, does that excite your curiosity too? Perhaps you would care to read more about it then. Just one of 18 volumes. <laughs> and our library has the entire collection. I give you my gratitude. Research of weapons could be a good reference for me. Oh, please take my apologies. I was meaning to tell you that our professor is wanting to see you. Oh, it is not like you to forget something. Ouch. I suppose I ought to be going then. You distracted her, huh? It's your fault. <laughs> yes, it is a rarity that I forget something. But it is not impossible. <laughs> I don't remember where that support chain ends up at all, oh, but that'll be an exciting thing to get into more uh, in Crimson Flower. Anywho, Leone and Alois to A. What kind of stories are they going to swamp so this time? that's it. I'm going to be a great mercenary just like Captain Gerald. And another time when he almost killed me was... <laughs> ha! You skipped right to the conclusion. That's exactly what Gerald would do. I know. I picked that up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that might not be the finest trait of his to emulate. In the end, it comes down to combat skill. That's performed I'm perfectly by right now. This. Why's that? <laughs> I've strived to become a knight at the level of Captain Geralt, but I'm an old man. I've come to accept that I will never be his match. No, don't say that. You can't give up. No, no, it's quite all right. I know myself and what I'm capable of, but you're still young. Youth is a weapon of the utmost power. Not sure I like that Infinite phrase. Possibility. We are both Point taken. inspired by no. Captain Geralt, so I hereby bequeath to you my lofty ambitions that's wow i'm sorry i <laughs> i don't know what to say no need to cry leone i'm relieved my dream is in good hands with you captain gerald is looking down proudly on you i'm sure will you carry on his legacy of course i will definitely leone uh do you remember the story I told you once about what happened at the inn? I do. The hatchet throwing? Sure, I remember. Why? Gerald ran up quite a tab with all his thinking, and he left without pay. Now his debt is due, and as you have declared that you'll carry on his legacy... That's what is... this was about! You see where I'm going with this. Wait, what? That's got nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me either. I don't drink. Even so, not anymore, I guess. All this time, I've been paying it back little by little, and it's not just that one place. He oh, owes God. money in towns all over Fodlan. I haven't been able to step into a tavern anywhere without being badgered for payment. 
so exhausting. But now I can say that the debts are for you to cover. <laughs> Man. You're still young, so I'm sure you'll manage in time. Thank you, Leonie. Hold on, that's a joke, right? <laughs> hey, get back here. Take your lofty ambitions back. I don't want your stupid debts. I, I bet Gerald and Halloween song argued like that too, though. So in a way, <laughs> she is carrying on his legacy in that sense, isn't she? Uh, Sh Catherine and Halloween. Oh, we just had an Halloween one. Uh, Shamir and Petra to be. Shamir, can I be having your time? There is a thought that is giving me great concern. Let's hear it, Petra. If Dagda is ever invading Fodlin again, what will you be mm, doing? What side will you take? <laughs> I'd join the army of Dagda. I'd lay waste to Fodlin and return to <laughs> If that is the truth, then I am having one more I'd question win. for you. If that was happening, and all of us were fighting for Fodlin, would you be fighting us, too? Of course. You expect me to die for you? You should be prepared to do the same. Your homeland would likely join Dagda. So, that is your truth? Maybe. If you'd asked me five years ago. What the? Hmm? I've been a mercenary since childhood. Always fighting for a bounty. If my allies didn't pay, I'd side with the enemy. It's why I became a sniper. Easier to dispose of anyone with a reward on their head. It's also why I joined the Knights of Saros. I owed them a debt, but that's all changed. You are not fighting for money now? That's right. When I see everyone fighting for Fodlan, I feel inclined to help. I won't die for the cause, but I will protect everyone. If the army of Dagda engaged you, I'd fight at your side. Man, you really were misleading him when you started this conversation. Open with that next time! <laughs> Hearing that is giving... It gives me great joy. Until the war is finished, let us fight together. Indeed, indeed. Is that where that support chain ends? Interesting. That was that was quite brief, but well, again, interesting. Uh, Caspar and Hilda. <laughs> Who is he beating up this time? We really appreciate how open-minded you are. Oh, how do you mean? People usually try to hold me back when I get into a fight. Not you, though. You seem to love the bloodshed. <laughs> I like that about you. What was it again? You like a good fight? Yeah, I remember it now. I'm not sure where you got that from. I try to avoid conflict of I'm all kinds. Pretty sure you said the words. That can't be right. You complimented my fight. You said you were smitten by it. Hmm. Well, if you really <laughs> must know, I was lying my ass I off. I want to live freely with nothing tying me down. So your uninhibited attitude does appeal to me. You don't let rules hold you back. You do things your way and no one else's. That makes sense. I guess I am pretty impressive. You're really amazing too, you know that? Oh, me? Amazing? Shucks. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I think most people like to force their ideas on everyone else. They'll tell someone off if they don't like how the other person is living. Try to make them change even if they don't want to. What? That would never happen. Especially on the internet. You're different, Val. You let people live however they want. There aren't a lot of people like you in the world. Stop! You're going to make me blush. No one's ever that paid me so sailed. many compliments. Come on, really? My big brother liked to tell me how lazy and careless I was. I've gotten scolds of plenty, but compliments, I'm not accustomed to. I find that unlikely. That's surprising. But I don't think you should let it bother you so much. You shouldn't let anyone change you, or else you'll end up losing the qualities that make you so great. I suppose you're right. Wow. Thanks, Caspar. We should live our own lives and stop worrying about others' opinions. <laughs> she said that so, so self-congratulatorily. That is very sweet, and I do like that. And I'm mostly of the, I'm, I'm often of the same mind. I like when two characters get to grow, but I also like it when they develop a concept of what is their key aspect and what makes them tick and what, what they will not ever give up about themselves. Leonie and Shamir. I heard what you did. I'm disappointed, Leonie. Um, hi, Shamir. <laughs> what have you heard exactly? Yeah, what are we talking about? You aimed your bow at a group of students passing through oh. a monastery. Oh. Was this an <laughs> idiotic oh. idea of training? Oh. Oh. I told you to be cautious. I'm sorry. Idiotic's a bit harsh, though, isn't it? Ah. What were you planning I mean... on doing after you took aim? Shooting passersby? <sighs> of course not. If you want to train, choose a target you could actually shoot. I know. Everyone was pretty mad. 
I really am sorry. Nobody's happy to have a bow pointed <laughs> at them. My mentor used to do that kind of thing a lot. Mentor? Yeah, I imagine so. Was that Gerald? I don't know much about him. Would he really do that? Yeah. Would and did. Mostly when he was drunk, though. Not a good habit to emulate. <laughs> From now on, only aim at bugs, like I showed you. But, um, I don't really like bugs. You don't like bugs? That should make you want to aim at them even more. I just can't look at them. Seeing all the extra legs and things, ugh, makes my skin crawl. Then just draw some spiders and hang them on the walls. Aim at the drawings whenever you pass one. Overcome your fear of bugs while you train. You want me to draw <laughs> spiders? Ew, no. Would that even help? Yes, I should know. Huh? You were scared of them too? I was, but they don't bother me anymore. Okay, you've talked me into it. I'll give it a try. I don't think shooting a picture of something that scared and me would fix it. Them where other <laughs> Gonna be honest. Might pass. <laughs> got it. Got it. Learn my lesson. <laughs> Promise. I'm choosing to believe that. <laughs> I just the mantle image of Leone like sitting on top of like a, a low roof. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Brad, well, she's like we're trying to get to classes and stuff. What would it, what would it even look like for that one of them to go running to the authorities for help? Um, one of the other students is threatening everyone's lives. She acted like she was going to shoot me. Can you suspend her? Poor Leone, but also that's amazing. And uh, last but not least, it would seem Catherine and Eloise. You know, is Catherine, he getting scammed again? You really saved my hide. If not for you, I would have bought that phony coin. So I just wanted to say money thanks. Not bad. Really, not I bad. Quite begin to express my gratitude. Money thanks was better. There's no need to thank me, Eloise. It was nothing. But I am a little worried about you. You just immediately believed what he was saying. You're way too trusting. I wish you'd be a little more skeptical about people, that's all. Hmm. Yes, you make a good point. I'll try to be more cautious from now on. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh -oh. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt. Good day, ma'am. Do you need something? I'm afraid so. You see, I'm a humble traveler, and a pickpocket stole all my money. I don't have enough to get home, and I have nowhere to sleep tonight. Please, sir, spare a little money to help me. I thought we were going to go on the route of, you're a knight, please go catch the pickpocket. Oh, I'm so sorry about your troubles. I don't have much on me, but here. Alois, no, not so fast. You there, <laughs> traveler. Tell me your name. I'd like to take an official statement from you so that we can investigate this theft. Once we ascertain exactly what happened, then we will lend you some money. How does that sound? Ah, uh, <laughs> maybe not. <And> she's gone. <laughs> what? You don't mean she was trying to... Yes, she was. It's a common trick for cheats to pull. They pluck at your heartstrings so that you'll give them your money. You just said you'd be more careful, too. You really are an easy mark, Eloise. Oh, how embarrassing. Why are you so quick to trust people? I've always believed that to earn others' trust, you have to be trusting. You're taking that philosophy a bit too far. <laughs> Maybe a little. But I do prefer that you err on that side than the other one. That's very good of you, Eloise. Uh, oh, my sorry. Apologies. Uh, also, uh, Eloise and Petra. I've shared a fair number of jokes with Petra by now. Though there is a strange shame in having to explain <laughs> them all in detail. Hmm. A strange shame. It's a lovely oh, way to put it. Is that Petra? She's talking to some kids. Oh no. Our hunting had great success today. You're amazing, lady. Did you really catch all those birds? How do you even get that good at hunting? You wish to know the secrets? Yes, please. Teach us. Teach There's us. There's going to be an, a failed hey, joke Petra, attempt here. What were you saying just now? I was asked to tell the secrets of my hunting. Oh, wait, are you going to try using... Training is the most important for hunting. You can start by... Breaking the ice! Huh? Wait, I think you mean breaking the ice. <laughs> you sure broke something there. <laughs> What I meant was... That technique was an incredible one. <laughs> you are the most comedic genius in all of Bodlin. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say genius, per se. I don't really get what they're saying. But it looks like the lady's having fun. Yeah, she's, uh, a pretty funny lady. 
I have been called a funny one. <laughs> it is all because of your doing. Oh, oh no. <laughs> they seem more shocked than amused. I want even more improvement. I wish for you to instruct me all day. Will you be agreeing, Professor Eloise? Petra seems to be headed in a strange direction. Yeah, no it joke. It is her choice. If she starts telling lots of bad jokes, I hope the people of Bridget don't come after me. Not my fault. I mean, a little bit your fault. Hey, look, don't look at me. You got yourself into this, man. <laughs> I did not know how much I needed in my life. Petra going, ah, ah, after telling a joke wrong. <laughs> Oh my god, breaking the eyes. <laughs> it's like so, such a vicious image. Oh, that was so fun. <laughs> I'm glad I've never seen that one before and that I got to the first time I got to see it was on camera. That's too, that's too much fun, honestly. Sorry, I need to, I need to hear that one again. You can start by breaking the eyes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just gets me so hard. It's like, <laughs> something there <laughs> like the just the dead the dead no motion from the kids and she's like huh how about that oh that got me good i love petra so much uh but that is all for this episode and this support theater so it's time to head back and that was the second last support theater we imagine because there's gonna be or maybe there'll be two more by the end of uh, the next month as well but we are we are nearing the end of each each thing we do is gonna be the last time we do this for this series, which is so crazy when it's such a long series like this. Uh, but the next video on the channel is going to be some more Kid Icarus Uprising, where finally, no more aliens. We're back to fantasy and stuff, so who even knows what, uh, I mean, without aliens, what happens next? I guess we'll see. Uh, but that is all for now, so thank you so very much for coming around. Hopefully I'll see you around, Admiral's going to be out of here now. Peace! Help! Send help! Think the cat needs help! Think the cat needs you. Oh my god. I can't see anything. My stupid umbrella, but it's the only way I won't fall and die. <laughs> this was the wrong time to switch to Big the Cat. I missed the checkpoint, did I? No, 